An inmate at the Virginia Department of Corrections, Red Onion State Prison. To accept this call, press zero. This is Randy Duvall, and I'm currently serving 1,214 years for capital murder in Red Onion State Prison in Pound, Virginia, in the USA. This is my podcast, Red Onion Randy. I hope you enjoy listening to me today. Today, I'm going to talk about something near and dear to my heart. Getting the frick out of prison. Um, I actually have some very potential good news. You have two guys in my pod, a dude named Tom and a dude named T-Mac. They, they made early parole, early release under the nonviolent a uh, new law is 65% for nonviolent offenders, while for violent offenders and lifers, you have to do the, you know, at least 85% of your time, and lifers, of course, have to do life, like life, life, life. Now, the crazy thing is, they came back from a meeting one day. I, I didn't even know they left a pod or anything like that, and one of the guys is on my vent with me. But they went over and had a video conference with a bunch of other inmates that uh, had made early parole, early release under the new 65% law. And they had a meeting with the Lieutenant Governor of Virginia, the Attorney General, Jason Myers of Virginia. I don't remember the Lieutenant Governor's name, I'm sorry. A very prominent judge and the Sheriff of Portsmouth, Virginia. And the meeting went, you know, how those meetings typically go. Look, you don't have to break the law when you get out of prison. We have all of these programs. Like, we want to help y'all succeed. Help us to help you and, and so on and so forth. What was interesting to me is that she went off script. And she was talking to the guys like, look, you know, like, we really are trying to make some changes in the state. Like, we're really trying to do some things. And the only reason that the governor, Glenn Youngkin, did not pass... The new law, which basically reverting the new law back to the old law, because the old law originally, just to give y'all some background and some information, is from January 1st, 96 is when the new law came into effect. So December 31st of 95, all the way on back, is what we call what we now call the old law, and that was the 65% law. Or actually, you know, technically speaking, if you did good enough, you could actually do 50% of your time because you've got 30 for 30 good time. So that means every 30 days that you did not catch a charge, you would get 30 days knocked off of your sentence. So if you did a year of good time, you would get a year knocked off the end of your sentence. You did 10 years of good time, you would get 10 years knocked off your sentence. And that's how it worked. Or you could get you know, uh, 15 for 30, meaning you would get 15 days off for every 30 days that you had good behavior, depending on your points. And uh, they've, I'm not going to try to break that down because freaking it's complicated to me, and I've been doing this for 32 years. So that was the old law, and that's what we call the old law. The new law was when President Bill Clinton, whom everybody holds up as the first champion of prisoners and prisoners' rights and all that stuff, yet it's kind of crazy that they all say that crap, especially here in prison. Like, it's made prisoners worship, damn near worship President Bill Clinton. And they don't realize that President Clinton is the one who's actually responsible for the new law meaning you have to do 85% plus of your damn time. You know, he's responsible for prison being the way it is right now. He's responsible for prison being a damn corporation. Basically, it's what prison is now. It's just another corporation. It's just another Fortune 500 company, even though they don't want to admit it publicly. So he he'd sit there and told every single state, look, if you will switch to the 85% law, I will give you $75 million of federal tax money. And a whole bunch of states jumped on top of that. Because where do you think that $75 million went to? The damn show ain't go towards education or public housing or, or, or fixing the roads. I can tell you that much. That's the difference between the old law and the new law. So now they've reverted nonviolent offenders 
back to the old law, meaning you only have to do 65% of your time. You can get out early now for good behavior, completing programs, getting your GED, you know, so on and so forth. Now, the lieutenant governor said in this meeting to these, these other guys that just made it that, look, the only reason Glenn Youngkin did not pass the new law back to the old law for violent offenders and lifers is the fact that he just come into office. He had so much on his plate, which, I mean, in, in, in the man's defense, I respect that. I mean, that's that's a legitimate defense. I can understand that. And quite frankly, it's freaking true. I mean, your incoming governor, you're going to have a lot to deal with. So he's like, basically, she's like, look, he didn't just veto it out of spite or, or just because he's Republican or whatnot. He done it because he wanted to sit down and actually take time to look at it and to see, you know, what the proposals were, how this is going to affect society, how this is going to affect people that don't break the law, how is it going to affect, you know, the criminals themselves and their family. Like he wanted to, you know, actually go through and look at it and sit down with experts and so on and so forth. And that's cool. I respect that. And says so now... He's seriously considering presenting a bill for violent offenders and lifers in front of the House of Legislation, which originally, in a couple of emails I sent to you know some of my friends that I write uh, when I first heard the news, I was thinking it was in November that the, the House of Legislation would meet in November, and that if it passes, you know it would be enacted January the first, and there you know there was a real potential for me to be released from prison come January. But I just found out, I was talking to the uh, assistant warden Blevins up here about this situation and, and my situation and so on and so forth. And he was like, no, the House of Legislation actually does not meet until January. So now I'm not sure the timeline on it. But still, if Governor Youngkin actually does send this bill to the House of Legislation, and he gets behind it, the lieutenant governor gets behind it, and she said in the meeting with these guys that she was diligently trying to get this bill passed. Like, she was working overtime trying to get this bill passed. And one of the reasons why they're doing it is because your average state only has between twenty and 30,000 inmates. Virginia, which is an average state. Now, your average state would be Pennsylvania, New Jersey, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, Arkansas, Oklahoma, Ohio, Washington State, Oregon, Denver, uh, Colorado, I mean, not Denver, Colorado. You know, states like that are your average states. They have between twenty and 30,000 inmates. Your large states like California and Texas and New York, they have a chunk of inmates. I don't know the exact number because she didn't say, but she said Virginia is an average state. It's an average size state. However, Virginia has over 50,000 inmates incarcerated in prison, not jails, not jails, prisons. And Virginia currently has 42 prisons. I actually went and dug in my paperwork, and I found a list of all the prisons that are in Virginia. For transfer purposes, they give you that list whenever you go up for ICA. So I counted them out. There's 42 prisons in Virginia. And she's like, look. The state of Virginia simply cannot afford to keep building new prisons. Like, we have to do something here. So that's one of the main impetuses behind them actually wanting to start releasing violent offenders and offenders. And I'm praying to God that they do. Because this is the thing. Right? Under the old law, life in prison was 25 years to life. Well, March 31st, will be 25 years to the day that I've been in adult prisons. March 21st of 2023, I will have done 25 years. So that would qualify me under the old law for parole, for early release from prison. On top of that, I've been charged free 17 years almost. April 28th of 2023 will be 17 years to the date I've been charged free. Now, I don't mean I've been written a couple of charges and I beat them in the hearing. I have not been written a charge, period. On top of that, I've had a job for nine years straight. On top of that, the Department of Corrections 
put me back in solitary confinement for seven years without a charge, without an investigation, without anything. I've completed all of the programs up here, some of them twice, with the sole exception for, you know, drug and alcohol abuse and the sexual predators uh, program. Because I don't drink, I don't do drugs, and I've never been a sexual predator, and I never will be. But I've done anger management several times. I've done thinking for a change several times. I've done decision points several times. I've done a whole bunch of these programs. I have my GED. I've educated myself to the best of my ability with the limited resources that I'm provided here in prison. I've done all of these things. I meet the criteria. Like, in my mind, there's no reason whatsoever that I should get turned down. However, though, now I'm, you know, like, I I really was optimistic. Now, like, I'm cautiously optimistic, kind of bordering a little bit on pessimistic at the moment, simply because there's a guy in here named David Taylor. Now, David Taylor's been in prison for, I think, 30 years, 32 years, something like that. You know, his crime for coming into prison, he robbed a store with a water pistol. You know, and the water pistol was, uh, you know, one of the black ones. You know, so I guess it, it kind of looked like a real gun, like a real pistol. And he's been in prison ever since for that. Now, this dude, he's here at Red Onion. He, he's been here like two or three times. And cause he's old school. He's like me. You know, like we don't take off nobody. Although I'm really, truly working on humbling myself, and I've been through a couple of instances lately where – I let some dudes get away with their mouth that I normally in the past I'd have knocked their teeth out or got mine knocked out, whichever happened. So, you know, he's still kind of old school. He's he's doing a lot better. He's not the same guy he used to be. But in prison, man, like there's there's like rules, and this is the thing that I don't think like prison staff understand. Like, there's only two types of people in prison. You're either predator or you will prey. And it's much better to be predator than it is to be prey. Because when you're a prey, you wind up sticking things in your mouth and ass that you don't want going in your mouth and ass. You you wind up giving commissary away to people you don't want to give commissary away because you don't want to get beat up. So you've got to pay these people off. So it's much better to be a predator in here than it is to be a prey. So he's kind of had a few fights. He hasn't stabbed nobody. He hasn't assaulted staff. He's done none of those things. He has been in fights with, you know, fist fights with guys. And those fist fights, you know, they're just average fist fights. Nobody got their jaws broken or ribs broken. Nobody had to be sent to a hospital. They just simply fought until the COs jumped on him and pulled him apart. But he hasn't done that in a while. He's been charge free for years. And he's gone up in front of the parole board three times. He just went up in June. He'll go up again next June for his fourth time. Now, this guy has literally, and I know this for a fact because I saw it with my own eyes. This is the man, David Taylor, we call him Soldier, that's his nickname in prison. He's the one that saved Little John's life when Little John passed out from pain. He had a pancreatitis and, you know, he'd been drinking and all of that stuff. Originally, we thought it was an OD, but, you know, he come back and said that it wasn't that. Um, you know, there, maybe it was, maybe it wasn't, maybe it was all three, maybe it was more than that, maybe it was none of that. I, you never know in prison, to be honest. You, you can never really be 100% sure when it comes to stuff like that. But the fact of the matter is that man was dead because when they pulled him out that damn cell, it was right in front of my cell where he was laying on the floor, and this man was dead. Like, his face was completely swollen. His tongue was hanging out of his mouth like eight, nine inches long. Freaking is big around as, as, as a damn giraffe tongue. Like, it literally looked like a giraffe tongue. It had that same blackish blue purplish color as a giraffe tongue. Like, go look at a giraffe tongue online and stick that out of a human mouth. He's, David Taylor saved this man's life. David Taylor's the one that went and ran out into the office, grabbed the COs, and he literally had the CO by the arm. Like, honestly, he probably should have got a charge for that, truth be told, because he was manhandling the CO, dragging him down there to the dude's door. He saved that man's life. On top of that, before that happened, a CO had actually fell out. A CO, a correctional officer, had fell out. David Taylor went, picked the man up, woke him up, and helped him. Helped him get medical attention, all of that. On top of that, 
he found while he, because he was the houseman, like he was the go-to houseman up here, right? This dude used to clean everything, and like they used to take him across the yard to work. And that's level six. C building and D building is level six red on you, and A building and B building is level five red on you. This dude was such a well-known worker up here that they would take him to other buildings to work, and you're not supposed to do that. Then on top of all of that, and in the process of that, I mean, excuse me, he found two metal knives and turned them in on two separate occasions. Who knows whose names were written on those knives? And he, and he actually talked to me about this. And I got, actually, I got his permission because, you know, we was discussing the new law for violent offenders and, and lifers and whatnot because the robbery charge that he's got, he falls under the violent offenders. So, you know, he's hoping to get it himself, you know, the same as me. And so he gave me permission to put him on the podcast. But, like, he saved people's lives in prison. Like, he's done everything he's supposed to have done. He's, he's in school. He's doing his best to get educated, to get a GED and so on and so forth. He's completed the programs. He, he has a job. I mean, he's done all of these things up here. And yet, they done shot him down for the third year in a row. And, you know, we was discussing it, and we think that it's simply because he's still here at Red Onion, because he hasn't been transferred off of here yet. So now that's kind of got me stressed out a little bit, like, damn, man, I'm the one inmate that really can't get transferred off of Red Onion. I've been here for 22 years. I've been charged free for 17 years, and I still can't. I still can't get released from Red Onion. The maximum you you have to be charged free for a minimum of one year. I mean, excuse me, you have to be charged free for a minimum of one year to be transferred from Red Onion if you're on level five population, which I have been. Now I, I sent an email to Gay Gardner last week, and she sent me an email back saying that she has a meeting with David Robinson again this week, and she's going to talk to him about me being transferred. But like if I, you have one minute remaining, if I can't get transferred, like I'm really concerned that I'm not going to get this early release now simply because only thing they're going to look at is red onion. That's all they're going to see. They're not going to look at how long I've been charged for or anything else. But this has been Red Onion Randy. I hope you enjoyed listening to me today. For those of you who listen to me on Apple Podcasts, I'd appreciate it if you would review me and rate me, preferably five stars, but I'll take whatever you'll get me. Don't forget to check out my website, redonionrandy.com. Take care. Stay safe. Thank you for using GTL.